within these works, the activities, will try to actualize the philosophy of Swami Vivekananda. So let us move into the topic. It is a very vulnerable topic, very intellectual topic. It requires a little bit philosophical analysis. Swami Vivekananda's spiritual humanitarianism, or in short, you can say divine humanism. Nearly 120 years back, an Indian young man, 30 years old, wandering on the American soil without having any relatives there, without having any credentials, without having any familiarity with that society, found and that person within one or two days is going to become world famous. That person was Swami Vivekananda, absolutely unknown to the world. Even he was not completely known to India also. Accidentally he met one person. The name of that person was John Henry Wright. After having a little discussion, that person could know that this Indian young monk is a delegate to the Parliament of Religions. But unfortunately, he did not have any credential. But without credential, nobody will be allowed to speak on the platform. And Swamiji, Swami Vivekananda told John Hadley, I don't have any credential. Do you know what was the comment? John Henry Wright told to Swamiji, Swamiji, to ask you credential is like asking the son whether he has the right to give the sign. So this was the statement. And again he added, I will write to my friend, Dr. Barros, who was the chairman of the world's parliament of religions. And he wrote, he wrote only one sentence. And out of that one sentence, you can imagine the power, the prestige, the dignity that Swami Vivekananda commanded them. them, them. He wrote, here is a man who is more learned than all our learned professors put together. In America, a professor is writing about a young Indian monk that here is a man who is more learned than all our learned professors put together. This much was his comment. And taking this, Swami got the credit. And before reaching this phase, the first session was 11 September. On the 10th September, he was not fully settled. Even though I heard in the night, he entered into a dilapidated compartment, railway compartment box. He was trembling with the cold. And suddenly, somebody appeared and attended to. After that, he went and somehow it was managed. And you know, the most powerful, the most influential incident that happened on the very first day of the parliament of religions, 
Swami Vivekananda was only 30 years old. When he stood up and started with these five words, sisters and brothers of America, the 7,000 people were simply mesmerized with these words. That was the power he exercised over his audience. The sisters and brothers of America. And when Swamiji spoke these words, actually the present audience felt that attention, that sense of belongingness. The here is a man whose words are not mere words, whose words are carrying the feelings with them. The sisters and brothers of America. And then, and within three or four sentences, Swamiji put the dignity of India, the state of India in front of the world audience. Swamiji continued, Sisters and brothers of America, it fills my heart with joy unspeakable to rise in response to the world and would you welcome Mr. Kirtan. I thank you in the name of the most ancient order of monks in the world. I thank you in the name of the mother of religions. And I thank you in the name of the millions and millions of Hindu people of all classes and sects. If you observe within these three sentences, Swamiji told three greatness of India. One, India has the most ancient order of monks. Two, India, Indian religion is the mother of all religions. And India, unity, the unity with diversity. After that, Swamiji spread his message. Swami is told in different languages in different places. I had a message to the West, as Krishna had a message to the East. And Swami's message was the message of the divine divine. Man is to realize divine. Man is to become divine by realizing the divinity. And Swamiji lectured in different cities and different places to many types of audiences to preach this divine humanistic message to the whole world. So the divine humanity is man is divine and the whole society is divine. By helping others to realize the divine, you attain that divine. That is the divine humanity. The entire universe is divine. The way you help others to realize that divinity, you develop within yourself this self. So this is the message of spiritual humanity energy. We should help mankind to actualize the potential spirituality the potential divinity and by that we also realize our own divinity. Therefore, Swamiji used to say, by helping others, we really help ourselves. This is a very small sentence having a great meaning. By helping others, we help Swamiji developed this idea. We shall see how slowly, slowly, from his childhood, he was acquiring this tendency within himself so that in the future he could preach the entire humanity among this lost. During his childhood, his father was Vishwanathan. He was a lawyer, but he was very kind-hearted person. 
He did not save anything for his own family, for his own family's future. With open hand, he, he wanted to help others. By observing this, Vivekananda, when at that time a little baby, small child, once he objected, Father, why are you spending so much money for others? It seems very useless. You could have saved for us. His father patted the back of the small Noel, Noel Mila, the childhood, the pre monastic name of Vivekananda. Dear son, there will come a time when you see the whole world. You will even try to help a very beggar, even a drunkard, even a smoker. If you can feel the fight, the torture, the sufferings of mankind, then you will go forward to help even a smoker, smoker, a drunkard. That was the training, the beginning of Swami Vivekananda's spiritual humanitarianism. Again, after some years, when he met Sri Ramakrishna, Paramahansa, his guru, he was very strong, very intellectual, very bold, young man. He studied philosophy. Suddenly, you know, you might have known, suddenly the idea entered into mind that if there is God, I should see God. And keeping this question in his mind, he went and asked him to different people, then popular people. He, he went and asked him, have you seen God? Everybody answered in different ways. Even he asked Devadana Tiger, the father of Ravindana Tiger, have you seen God? Devadana Tiger had replied, no, I have not seen, but I see at your eyes. If you try, you can see God. But he was not satisfied. The young Narayanath was not satisfied. He went to Sri Ramakrishna. He asked the same question. And Sri Ramakrishna Paramahansa boldly gave the positive reply. Yes, I have seen God. And if you wish, I can show you too. That was an amazing answer. And the story went, went, went on. So he realized that the way of the year is that this person has realized God and he himself also had some type of vision. But it was not complete. It was not complete. Again, he went and studied different scriptures, the lives of their personalities. Again, suddenly, after staying so many days with Sri Ramakrishna, he was eager to attend enlightenment, samadhi. Those of you who have read the life of Gautam Buddha, the Bodho. Buddha means he who has attained Bodhi. Bodhi means enlightenment. Enlightenment means a state where you fully experience your unity with the infinite. At that moment, all the doubts are right. That is called the state of enlightenment. Samadhi in your tradition. This was Samadhi. So Vivekananda was so much interested in attaining Samadhi. Time to time he would go to the Ramakrishna, please give me Samadhi. Because he was then confirmed that if the Ramakrishna was in the respected Samadhi, Prabhupada, Krishna, Ashram, Manigudi, for his outstanding thought, entitled the elements of the spiritual humanitarianism of Swami Vivekananda. It will be summarized by entire part of Swamiji. It is based on the line of Swami Vivekananda. Take up one idea, make that idea a new life, dream of it, think of it, live on that idea, let the breath, body, muscles, nerves, every part of your body be full of this idea and just leave every other idea alone. This is the way to get the success and this is the way great spiritual giants are produced. Thank you, sir, for your motivational and spiritual words for our students and other dignitaries who are present here. Also, I would like to give special thanks 
from four of my heart to our eighteen register madam for her constant support and guidance to make this program successful. Thank you, madam. In this context, I am immensely thankful and deeply sense of appreciation for the Deputy Registrar Dr. Uma Kuparan Pradeshar for his enormous cooperation and constant supervision. Thank you, sir, for your great effort. Also, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Oswa Gupta, sir, Senior Advocate Sambandhu for his great effort and cooperation and other deputy members of the Rangdish Commission and senior citizens of the Sambandhu for your presence. Thank you all of the deputies and all of the dignitaries who are present here.